Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very, very special episode of Local Chat. No, it is not our one-year anniversary. That is next week. It is, in fact, our year in review, uh, our first annual year in review. It's a big tradition around here. What in the world are you laughing at? I'm very excited for our year in review. <laughs> I'm very excited. I've been looking forward to this for at least three days. I'm a big um, urine fan. I can't wait to review it. <laughs> oh, I see God. what's happened here. We are all <laughs> yellow because you've chosen a poor highlighter color. Um, I have. This golden have. shower. I, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it real quick. Upon us. Um, yeah, I think uh, when I put this up, I'm going to share this uh, link, non-edited link, uh, so people can look through this. If you're listening along from home... Uh, joining me as always, Ian Gibson and also Kyle Bailey. He is here, Hi. and he is here, uh, and we're going to talk about your review. So we're he just going to jump right in. Ian <laughs> stole this. You're hot. You're in Florida. Get used to it. No, I'm saying I'm rolling with the hits already. Come rolling on now. With he every song a hit, every hit a smack. Um, so we're going to start here. Uh, we Ian had this big old list from the wiki. And we shrunk it down and highlighted stuff. So here we go. January 13th, 2021. There was some news. I, I forgot this was this year. This was big. It is still pretty big. But I forgot this was this year. You know what we, I just thought? We should discuss everything before saying what it is and see if people can guess it. Yeah, I, just leave it blank. Yeah. That's a terrible idea. Uh, Lucasfilm revived the Lucasfilm game brand and announced a new Star Wars game with Ubisoft and Massive Entertainment, terminating the exclusive license held by Electronic Arts for the property. Uh, and there's a no. That's the it's the notation. last part. It's the last part. That's the, big, the big, which the is big one. EA, you know, they had the exclusivity license uh, from Disney for Star Wars video games, and I, I remember we went through it, and it was like they had. Battlefront, Battlefront 2, they had Jedi Fallen Order. Squadrons. I think there was maybe one or two other games. Squadrons, and then, yeah. And then I think there was maybe a mobile or two. And that was it. Over it was like it was like five or six years. Yeah. It was crazy. They just made bad video games. Squadrons, yeah. more like squandered. Am I right? S yeah. So I'm just I I'm just trying to think, not that we have to come up with a definitive <laughs> answer now, but those are pretty good. We're nearly a, a year after this. So we have the Ubisoft and Massive games, I don't think they've actually been revealed what they are yet. We do have the Quantic Dream, which just got recently announced, the Quantic Dream Star Wars game. What what other Star Wars ones games have they announced? Fallen Order 2. Uh, yeah, that but I'm thinking outside that, EA. That Bounty Hunter oh. Zynga game? Oh, they did. They did. And they didn't. Oh, wasn't that a Nintendo uh, Direct they announced it? KOTOR oh, remake. Oh, so bad. Yeah. KOTOR remake. Yeah. So and, yeah, I think that's it. Which I do not have high hopes for. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, so so they've at least made some progress, but at the same time, announcements are one thing, delivered releases are another, and a completely separate thing entirely is a good title in your hands. Um, so I guess we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, Hopefully, it's. I mean, the, any sort of monopoly like this in video game, I think, is always good to be broken up. Because then you get yeah. you get a lot of interesting, especially um, with EA messing it up so badly. This this decision, it was overdue. It needed to happen. Yeah, and and it's weird this decision decision was ever made in the first place because Star Wars games thrived for so long when anyone could yeah. license it. So yep. it's it's still wild. Uh, moving on, uh, the twentieth, just seven days later. The incomparable, the amazing, the conclusion to Hitman series, Hitman 3, was released. Boys, good Hitman? Good Hitman. I still have not played it. Good um, Hitman. It's good. I, I, you know, Kyle, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. I feel like Hitman 3 is very good. I don't know that I would call it the best of the series. Mm. It's just more of the series. And, I mean, we'll talk more about this in Game of the Year, presumably if it comes up but yeah. hitman 3 was like sure it came out i played it i enjoyed it but I i'm glad they kind of considered this the end of the hitman trilogy because i'm ready for them to take on that james bond game and try something yes, new because it feels like it feels like this is a good end to hitman uh because they weren't quite moving it forward as much as i was hoping 
but yeah and it's also like it's also uh, i've said this before but it's like hitman 3 is the crescendo of an amazing trilogy and like if you're going to play a hitman game obviously it's like go get hitman 3 because two and one are backwards compatible and it is uh fine-tuned and all that sort of stuff and they are uh i think season two starts in january with new maps and stuff which they originally said they weren't gonna do and now they are doing it so i'm pretty excited about that um great game uh moving on ian you want to tackle this next bit of news uh yes uh january 22nd vicarious visions was merged into blizzard entertainment this was a bit of a shocking news vicarious visions they've done some ports their most recent one was the incredibly good tony hawks pro skater one plus two um so there were some details in this that were kind of internal but i believe they've since then been confirmed which is basically vicarious visions is basically no longer they are fully part of blizzard this is not them coming under the blizzard banner this is not them helping on the blizzard projects this is basically the full dev teams being split amongst various blizzard projects which i think is a shame this felt like a studio that was killing it they had projects they were doing incredibly well with the projects they were given why would you go in there and completely tear that teamwork and success apart and um this is a bit of foreshadowing but i i feel like this is just this is the calm before the storm in a way. This is this is one of those mm. uh, hints towards, hey, maybe Blizzard's not great at this whole being a game company thing and making overarching <laughs> game decisions. Um, and I think we're going to see some more proof of that later in 2021. It's almost like we can tell what happens. Just where yeah. It's almost like we're mediums. That's not the next piece of news, but um, <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, you still got another one before you get to uh, that one. <laughs> I will say, I just want to say uh, hindsight is twenty twenty, but I, I believe the rumor was that they were bringing on a bunch of, they wanted to do this because Blizzard projects were in jeopardy, especially like the Diablo 2 remaster, etc. And that didn't turn out well. I was going to so say, which is hilarious this, because this gamble definitely didn't pay off where you take an existing, well-worn, very well, very high productive team, split them up, try and get them to make your projects highly productive, and it don't work. And I would almost argue that hindsight's 2021. Um, That's correct. That's the name of the episode. Right. Oh, I'm definitely writing that. Um, yeah. The 27th uh, Dragon Quest Tact came out for the mobile devices. It is a mobile-ass mobile game for Dragon Quest. I only singled this out because I'm pretty sure it's the one thing that fueled my obsession with Dragon Quest all of a sudden, which led me to play Journey of the Cursed King and uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2. So. What, what started, was this before your year of the JRPG proclamation? Uh, I believe, actually... I don't know. I think it started with Chrono Trigger. I know it started with Chrono Trigger. I can't remember if I started Chrono Trigger. I think I started Chrono Trigger, wanted to play another JRPG, and then found Dragon Quest Tact on the iOS store. That would happen. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I gotta finish Chrono Trigger. Um, What a year. What a year. What a year, folks. (laughs) What a year. Uh, 28th, the very next day, the medium by Bloober Team came out. Bloober team known for Layers of Fear, Observer, Layers of Fear 2, The Layering. Um, the medium was their kind of love letter to Silent Hill. Either of you play it? No, I, I, nope. I, I highlighted it on here because this is January 28th. The Xbox Series X came out early November. I believe this is the first Xbox next gen only title. Yeah, I think you're right. And it didn't even hit that well. And and even when you look at like PlayStation 5, their their first big, this is subjective, their first big next gen only title was Ratchet and Clank. I'm not going to count Demon Souls in that. And that's or no, actually it was Returnal, which we haven't even gotten to yet. So I it just feels like 2021 was the, was the year of the slow next gen where it was yeah. very slow for a while and it feels like a year a year plus a month later it's finally starting to feel like next gen. It was it was a slow race to announce a price, then it was a slow race to announce release date, and then it was a slow race to put out video games. Um yeah. which honestly I put less on Xbox than PS5 because Xbox is always touted 
as like a you can play everything so like that yeah. kind of damage or uh cushion the damage and playstation has none of that so i think yeah it was it's, it was basically a ten dollar next gen port machine for a while there right totally um uh into february here uh january just blew by which i've been saying this entire year i i can't still can't believe hitman 3 came out this year um google shuttered its internal stadia games and entertainment division sorry i'm laughing because i'm remembering this as i read it (laughs) with plans to refocus on the service (laughs) as a publisher for third-party games is this the one where the like the vice president or something quit the day before or something i i think so but it's also the one where somebody i forget who he, i think he was messing with alex navarro of giant bomb yes because because alex I, I wish i remember the details but alex navarro said something bad it's about stadia and like one of the execs at stadia or one of the vps or, or developers or ma- major directors was just like yeah, too bad your your career's ended, and then well, and then, and then like, the day later. Yeah, it, it, I think it was a little bit later, but he said something like, "Stadia will never die; it's always going to be successful." And then if this news comes oh. out, where they're just like, "We're just going to be a publisher." I, I'm remembering this now because it's the reason I, this guy is the creative director for the Journey to the Savage Planet, and that's when I was like playing that game, and it wasn't very good. I was like, "I guess I won't play this anymore because this guy's an ass." But yeah, he was the guy was arguing. Um, that streamers should have to pay licensing fees that's to play right video games to stream and play right. video games. And Navarro <laughs> slammed him, just being like, "This is the stupidest idea I've ever seen." Oh, uh, so good! I totally forgot <sighs> I, about it, that. I, I look. I don't know about you, but when when this news came out, I I don't know if I explicitly said this, but I was expecting Stadia to be dead by the end of the year. Uh, cause you know, there, there is, there's a pretty significant cost, even though they are Google, there's a significant cost to keep those machines up and running to support stadia. So it is definitely a bit of a, a money hungry beast in terms of if it's not making money, cut it. I mean, but they can stadia still, is, it's still up. They can still hit it. There's 10 days as of this recording. Uh, no, 11 That's days, true. um, because I can do math. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe they'll lose it. Uh, the next bit of news here: Embracer Group embraced Gearbox Software, Asp- Aspire, Aspire Media, and Easy Brain. Uh, Aspire, known for a bunch of flips, um, yeah, like the Kotor stuff, and they've done a couple others. Um, Gearbox, of course, for um, <laughs> Magic Tricks on- at Medieval Times. Magic Tricks at Medieval Times. What's the name of that game that failed so fast? Um, Aliens, Colonial Marines. Colonial Marines. Yeah. No, not oh, was that one. But I was, I was, I was thinking of the Randy Pitchford. <laughs> I was thinking of the Overwatch Battleborn. one. Battleborn. Battleborn. Oh, with the fungus yeah. guy. Uh, that's all I remember. The one that will never go free to play when it probably should have gone free to play because that's the only way you could have survived. Uh, and I have no idea what Easy Brain does, and I can't click on these notations. So it's like it's like Speed Tree, but for brains. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> Abby Normal. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Embracer yep. is Embrace. Embracer is THQ Nordic. Yes, I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe they renamed. Yeah. Um, I think there's still THQ Nordic as like its the publisher. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then Embracer Group is the, is the the overarching company that 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 owns THQ Nordic and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, parent um, company. Yep. It's just kind of interesting. It's I feel like this is becoming a bigger and bigger trend. Which is you have Tencent, you have Embracer Group, you have Epic under that. Basically, uh, we have these new round of mon- pseudo monopolies coming in. These oligarchic gaming conglomerates. You know, we used to have EA and Activision. They're still there, but they're not as powerful anymore. Uh, take two, and now the new round is coming up. Embracer, Tencent, etc. So it's interesting to see uh, what will come out of that. Probably nothing great, but who knows. Who knows? Um, I was trying to think of that that new game they announced, the Tiny Tina's Wonderland. I oh. wasn't on board for at all, at at yeah. all. And then um, the I still don't know what it is. Is it a shooter or is it a? Is it's a it shooter. A medieval. It's ba- it's a shooter based in a fantasy world. Um, oh, I wasn't really that into it, but the strangely enough, the Game Awards trailer for it turned me around a little bit on it. Um. Because oh, who's I can't think of the person. Someone cool is the villain. Uh, Will Arnett, Jack not Black. Will Arnett. Is that Will Arnett, Joe? Chris Pratt. 
Lego uh, Batman. Is that Will Arnett? Will Arnett. Will yeah, Arnett. he's the bad Lego guy Batman. in that, and I kind of like him. So I was like, you know, and then they were showing some gameplay, and I was like, this looks kind of. Uh, anyway, sorry. That is a, a tangent to our next thing. Uh, February 2nd, 2021, Destruction All Stars, Ian's, I think, game of the year. Uh, we'll, we'll have oh, to tune in God. for that one. Uh, Ian, you want to talk about, talk about this to the kids at home? Yeah, this is the title that they wanted you to pay $70 for at <laughs> PS5 launch. And then I don't think this is, I, I swear, I think it was a week or two before the PS5 came out that they pushed it to February. And I think they also announced it's going to be a PlayStation Plus title. This is, look, PlayStation Plus and Game Pass, they're fantastic services. No offense to the games that end up on those services, but a lot of them don't deserve your time or money, but are perfect for those services because you get to try them out easily. This game is so bad that even being free on a subscription service you're already subscribed to can't save it. We played it for one stream. We made it through the stream, right? We made I, it. I was just about to say, I don't know minute. if we did it. <laughs> there are very few times that we cut a stream short because the game is not working either for us or hardware wise or whatever. And this was one of those where we just, I think it was 45 minutes and I was done. It yeah. was just, it's not good. Yeah, it was, it just like, I was watching you play it. It just didn't look fun. Like, no, I don't know how feel good. I feel like it was so wrapped up in like, yeah, this is fun. And nobody stopped to think, is it? I look, I don't mean to get on my uh, AAA game hobby horse, but this is a fantastic example of you think you have a cool idea and you spend so much time on visuals and marketing and adding all these cosmetics and cool animations that you never sit down and go, hey, does the actual core gameplay feel any good? Because it turns out it doesn't. And it doesn't matter how much like marketing or animation budget or art or extra mechanics you throw at it. If the core doesn't feel good, it's not going to work. Yeah. And it's 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 part of that slow PS5 Xbox Series X launch. Is it just I, I just don't even remember this at all. I mean, I don't have a PlayStation 5, so there's no reason why I would pay attention to it. But I like, wish I was you. It's just I like I, I'm looking at these images on Google <laughs> Images being like uh, it looks so generic. It's like they, they took, kept showing it off. They took Rocket they kept showing it off before the PS5 came out. It's they crazy. put Rocket League into a slider and then put sliders different directions to just so change is it, it just mm-hmm. enough. Is it like Rocket League meets Twisted Metal? Like what a is it? A bit, and you can get out of your car and you try to hijack other cars, but it's just not fun. It's like, I think it's like Capture the Flag ish too. It's, okay. it's and the cars it's would get good. stuck, right? You like weren't always going. Oh yeah. Yeah, you could you could get like knocked out of your car and then you had to go find Because I feel car. like Rocket League, was... you're just always going. Even when you stop, yeah. you can just go right away. Yeah, yeah. This this was just like this game was pushed so hard by Sony. This was like this is one of our PS5 tentpole releases. It really was. And it just it wasn't it ended up not even being a launch title. And it didn't even do well as PS Plus. Just crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, moving on to uh, certainly from from a not game of the year contender to a possible game of the year contender, Valheim was released in early access on the second of man, second of February twenty twenty one. Can you believe the hubris and the idioticness of Ian and Will uh, streaming the stupidest game ever on the release date of one of the perfectest games ever? Um, I don't. It hadn't hit yet, right? It like, hadn't like, hit like yet. I feel like it wasn't. It, it took wasn't, off. Yeah. And yeah. and contrary to what the propaganda machine will spit out to you, Zach and I played that game a lot before someone else decided to join the hype train. So just let that be known. Uh, those yes, Val- <laughs> those are one of the one of the streams I actually sat down and watched because I was like, this is actually like it's, this game is interesting. That yeah, that it's, game it's really has good. such good feels and the music. I think I described as fantasy jazz, just like yeah. It's like lo-fi beats to study to, but in medieval time. Like, it yeah, just hits so well. It just has so many good game design decisions. Like, like the opposite of Destruction All-Stars in terms of they went to it and they went every single time they had to make a decision around mechanics or uh, systems or how things are implemented or revealed to the player. They were like, let's take time to consider this decision. Um, and you can feel that in all of those systems. 
And so you end up with this indie little game that if you just look at it, you go like, yeah, it's got a weird little look to it, but who cares? But once you start playing it and you go, oh, you can't starve, but the food makes you better. So it's it's encouraging you to eat food, but it doesn't punish you if you don't. And it's just like, oh, my God, like it, <laughs> yeah. it's this is a fantastic game. And guess what, folks? It's not a triple A game because I think triple A games suck. Yeah, and it, it certainly it fixed a lot of problems like it's not as robust as a minecraft as far as building so to compensate for that they uh because in minecraft when you don't want to do progression you can go build but in this game you can kind of do the same thing but they they streamline progression where you always know what you have to do next they always know what you can work towards and what you can wait and like do stuff so, uh yeah it's great fantastic game fantastic game um another game on this list uh on the 12th nearly 10 days later super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury uh, i own this game i played maybe five minutes of bowser's fury and about an hour of super mario 3d world um just haven't gotten back to it ian what about you i i, I didn't play this i super mario 3d world when it came out on the wii u my friend had a wii u he bought the game and there was like six of us and we all played the entirety of the game except for that last like carnival level yeah um in like in like eight hours sitting because we were just having so much fun with it i i think i think one of the strengths of the nintendo switch is that how do i put this i'll, I'll start with the strong point which is any of you idiots who ever badmouthed the wii u fuck them you're an idiot. The Wii U was a great console. Look, Fantastic it was a lower console. price point. It was a little wonky, but it had some great games like Nintendo Land, Splatoon, Super Mario 3D World, etc., etc., etc. Captain Toad. All these fantastic games on it. And the console just didn't sell enough. I think it's like 12 million lifetime sales. It's just it was very, very poorly low. marketed as well. Yeah. So I am really glad that all these fantastic Wii U games are getting sequels or ports to the Nintendo Switch with some extra content on top so that these games don't get stuck on people's bad opinion of the Wii U, that they get a second life to shine with the Nintendo Switch 100 million plus units out there. Yeah. Um, and just to clarify, in case people are yelling at me, um, we, we only played an hour of Super Mario 3D World because both Karen and I have beaten it. Before. And we were just mm. going to play through it again, but we haven't had It's too so. hard. Yeah. Yeah, it was too hard. It was way too hard, especially when you... <laughs> that's the game that... That's another improvement. When you die too much in that game, it just makes you invincible for a while. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. Um, This next bit of news... Kyle, you want to take this next bit of news? Sure. Uh, February 18th, two days before my mom's birthday. Um, nice. Electronic Arts decided to give her an early birthday present by acquiring oh. Codemasters for $1.2 billion. Wow, that is the kindest thing they've ever done for a random. She person. was very yeah. flattered. Um, she was she was really happy when I when I told her the news. I would rather just have the one point like, two billion. Yeah, I mean, she was a little <laughs> disappointed that like we, she couldn't pay off her mortgage, but you know, they, yeah. she was she was happy. Um, Codemasters, obviously, they do like Grid and some of the F one games and Dirt, right? I'm trying to remember what other stuff. Yeah. A lot of a lot of driving stuff. So you're with EA now. So I guess good luck. <laughs> good good luck for I, know. <laughs> I know. I was, I was about to say EA. Like I think they're just so desperate to have Need for Speed going again, yeah. even though they just keep making bad Need for Speed games. That look, I I feel like what's going to happen. I hate to say this. I feel like Codemasters is going to be slowly relegated to maybe one or two franchises. The F1 series makes them a lot of money. So probably that and maybe maybe Grid. And then the rest of Codemasters is going to be forced to make three or four really bad Need for Speed games. <laughs> and then eventually they're going to be shuttered and forced into part of EA. And it sucks. Um, but it's, it's kind of interesting. We were talking about all the acquisitions like Embracer. They made some smart acquisitions. Tencent is making some smart acquisitions. This does not feel like a smart acquisition. This feels like a, hey, remember when we were really good at great racing games? Let's go buy whoever's doing that now. And they end up with Codemasters, even though racing games are, quite frankly, kind of dead outside of Forza Horizon. So just a weird decision. But I, I mean, good for Codemasters. They make some good games. So I hope some people took the check and, and ran. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see yeah. how it plays out. That's wild. Uh, moving on to March here. 
the fourth Loop Hero was released, uh, a game I purchased the day it came out and didn't stop playing for quite some time. Uh, as of this recording, it is currently free on Epic Game Store, but it won't be when you listen to this. Hey. Hurry. Um, Suckers! I think, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think Loop Hero nails what it's going for. It's a, a roguelike where you have a track that your character's going around, um, and, uh, Sorry, you play you play cards to put stuff down on the track to make them fight it. You earn resources and stuff when you finish or leave the loop. Uh, you can get you can build up your uh, your little home and everything. Uh, it's got a great like uh, uh, not a tar- Amiga uh, like uh, look to it, um, and kind of nails that CRT effect, uh, which a lot of things never nail very well, and it this kind of mm-hmm. hits it really well. So. Definitely recommend checking it out. Even I think it's retail fifteen dollars. It's even worth that. Uh, but you can get it for free today, except for when you're listening to this. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's it's part of that. I there, I I always like to f- call out the indie games or flavor of the month games that hit. You know, twenty twenty it was Among Us, and then it was oh, I immediately forgot of the other one. Fall Guys. Was, uh, yeah, Fall Guys. Uh, I Loop Hero was definitely one of the ones from 2021, a success story, along with Valheim, where they just made some really smart decisions. They got out there. I mean, they had Devolver behind them to kind of push it, but the game speaks for itself. So good, good for them. Yeah, totally. Uh, this next bit of news is not. Uh, I mean, it's pretty big. Uh, they uh, Microsoft in the previous year announced that they were uh, going to buy ZeniMax Media, and then on the 9th of March, the deal was officially completed for the acquisition. And its subsidiary studios uh, making Microsoft putting them up on the list of good acquisitions um, because I think they've really run with that so far, despite um, mm-hmm. hardcore Sony fans being exquisitely upset uh, <coughs> yeah. that the next Elder Scrolls won't be on their precious little stupid little console. No. On the on the um, PS6, on the, the PS5 six. slash yeah. PS6, and Elder Scrolls. And it's like 50 years. Todd, <laughs> Robo Todd Howard will say, see it'll that? It'll still be... Robo Cliff it'll... over there, you can VR to it. It'll still be broken at <laughs> launch, though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God. Love. That's the... We're finally... They're, they're finally going to decide to move away from the creation engine, but unfortunately, they're just going to go use Unreal Engine 3 or something. Like, something really old, but they're like, it's a different engine! Stop no. complaining. You think they Xbox... just need to fire? They need to fire all of their executives that make QA decisions because they run their QA department <laughs> awfully, I which wonder... makes one hundred percent sense why their games are full of bugs. I wonder if Microsoft for Starfield will uh, boost their make QA them... stuff. I was going to say, like, make them actually. Like, would they do a send good it job? to other Xbox studios I... or QA no, cause, departments? Because the way Bethesda QA works out of Bethesda is they. They supplement the QA of other of other Bethesda games. So like some of Doom QA was out of Bethesda. But I, I'm saying so now it, that Microsoft so, has them. No. Well, but the other side is that Microsoft said Bethesda, we're going to continue to let Bethesda and ZeniMax do their own thing. So I, I would not see them trying to subsidize it out. I uh, could see them if if Starfield releases and it's bad. I could see yes. Microsoft stepping in and be like, we're not letting this happen anymore. But yeah, and they really should. Basic, yeah, I mean, I think they definitely should. But I think that they need proof, like in order to like yeah, proof like, of I like we if, own them and yeah. they did this under us. So like we need. Yeah, I, don't, I wonder I don't if know, even now yeah. Phil Spencer's like, hey, I play a lot of Bethesda games and they always launch crappy. Let's make sure this one doesn't. Yeah. Happen. yeah, like, hey, stop locking the QA testers in the basement. And let yeah. them actually talk to developers instead of through managers. Yeah, let them pee Assholes. occasionally. Of course your games are full of bugs. You treat QA like shit. <laughs> um, Sorry, a little bit of inside baseball there. I love the inside of a baseball. Uh, <laughs> armadillo. Uh, Ian, uh, I'm going to give you this next one because it's your favorite video game. And it's oh, actually not guys, properly capped. You have so many friends. Turns out Roblox is worth 30 plus billion dollars, according to the New York Stock Exchange. They went public on the 10th of March of 2021. Um, Yeah, Roblox. It's a lot of money. Uh, uh, There was actually some articles out recently how they may have actually been artificially inflating that value. But really, honestly, that value, even if it was just half that, that makes sense because there are a 
the game is so focused around microtransactions and they're constantly pushing you towards it. And there is a lot of content and a lot of creators and a lot of users in Roblox. So yeah, this is one of those like, like you guys know about those like black hole games, like League of Legends. Like we never talk about it because it's an awful game and we try to just we barely even know it exists, but it's like the number two game in the world, for example. Yeah. Let's not yeah. talk about it. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> I thought that was going somewhere. Um, no. <laughs> um, why Sony on the 18th Interactive oh, Entertainment and Endeavor? Oh, I put this. I did this one. I Sorry. I read Evolution. And I thought it was Evolution Soccer. Like, I don't care about this. Um, yeah, I forgot Sony and Endeavor. They acquired uh, Evo Championship series uh which is the fighting game uh convention ernie tournament T tournament it's, convention. It's, like, it's, it's like both yeah yeah it's like it's like a it's a company that holds fighting game tournaments across games across several different events throughout the year yeah that's wild um i i, I thought this was pretty big when it came out um i and i think they were saying that's they're still letting said. them still letting them run it <laughs> Well, come that was, on that was good that was good come on well it wasn't pretty big going in i don't know oh, um boy. anyway i think we move on i hate this um these next ones can i fly through them How just much do, 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 bundle. do a bundle it's on well, sale well actually sorry march ends with the 26th it takes two came out haze light uh game of the year for game awards year. this year um i know it did a lot of really cool things some people i th i think the only polarizing thing about that game i've heard from people arguing it in a zoom call is if the story hit for them or not because there are a lot of people saying it did because they've had parents of divorce and stuff like that and they they a lot of that spoke to them and then on the other side there was other people who were parents of or children of divorce and they were saying it didn't hit at all and i'm like but it's <laughs> Yeah. people are unique um and there's I, like people stuck in the middle because they're like one day i hope to get divorced but right. it hasn't <laughs> happened yet so i, I can't relate that. yeah totally there was um, something something funny about this today uh steam released their game of the year nominations or whatever and it takes two was nominated for it was like it was like best uh, game that you can play with more than one person, but it, it was like nominated in a way that it was like, no, it, you have to have another person to help you play this game. <laughs> yeah, and it was like all the other games. It was like you could have two people, but it was like, yeah. Ooh, I just remember uh, someone was saying they should have nominated Twelve Minutes for Best Family Game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that stupid game! <laughs> oh, it took so, so long to come out. I was even watching Ugh. the launch trailer. How different the graphics are from the final game. Um, I was hyped. I was hyped on the launch trailer for so long. I was like, "Yes, I want this." They had those I, people I in we're a recording ahead. studio for one day and could only get certain lines. <laughs> I, I know we're skipping ahead a bit, but twelve minutes is just like I it it looked so good because they were pressing it so hard in the marketing and it turns out it was trash all along and it's just like i guess i can't really believe uh i believe that was annapurna i guess i can't really believe annapurna marketing and hype anymore because that was bad thank god we didn't have to not, pay not for, for video games but <laughs> Um, well, I don't know. They're so they're so tightly linked to their film studio that now I'm like second guessing Annapurna <laughs> films. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, Outriders on the April Fool's Day, Outriders came out. Um, this was eh? okay. Look, I I know we want to scoot through these, but this one is crazy because this one hit and blew up, and I don't know why. Maybe because there wasn't really that many games so far in the year at this point and yeah. then it went away because it turns out it was actually mediocre but it just it did it hit way bigger than a mediocre game should and it's kind of weird i don't know how did you guys feel about I, this one i mean it's pretty average across the board i don't really remember it hitting that big. i just remember people playing it because it came out i remember um, i had a lot of people asking me to play it with them and i was like no because mm -hmm. it, it's got so many problems and uh yeah, yeah. I, I i remember like the two weeks during when when it came out it was it was really popular um and then it sort of just went away yeah it was yeah. it's I, I mean i played through a lot of it it's so average it's like like bargain basement destiny 
Um, <laughs> yeah. And it also it felt like Bargain Basement Destiny mixed with that Elix game um, from Piranha Bytes. It was very like, yes, yes. and I mean, the Elix, Elix is a very good game, much better written, no, it's not. but it's, <laughs> it's designed in a way that is just so contrary. Um, it's just like, that's the way those games are designed, and it's like they took a page from that, and those Elix and Gothic and Risen aren't meant for a mm-hmm. wide audience. It's meant for that audience, so it was like, why did you do this? Um, yeah. Wild. Uh, the next one's pretty wild on the Weed Day 420. Um, the MLB The Show, a PS, a Sony game, uh, was released on the Xbox as well as Sony consoles. Uh, a first party Sony game. What? First party Sony game launched on Game Pass. Launched day on one. Game Pass. Day one Game Pass. Uh, we did a stream. Did God, we make a lanky incredible. boy in that? We did, we did. We oh, made like a weird, lanky, so terrifying gross. boy. I mean, I guess it's a good baseball game. It's just not for me. Um, but yeah, this was a, so basically the behind the scenes was MLB said, hey, you're if you want to keep the MLB license for your video game, you can't lock it to a single console anymore. And they were like, OK, OK, we want that MLB licensing money. So they were basically forced to publish it with Xbox and Xbox, I guess, as part of their publishing agreement, was able to twist some arms and say, OK, well, we're going to put on Game Pass. So <laughs> it was this weird scenario where you have what is a huge release. It's basically the baseball game. It's a big release for sports fans and you can pay $70 for it on the PlayStation 5 <laughs> or you can pay, play it basically for free on the Xbox Series X. And it was just such a just such a beautiful stark contrast between sony and microsoft's next gen strategies crazy crazy wild um next uh next one here end of april returnal by housemark coming out here for the ps5 the very first ps5 uh exclusive launch title uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we did we did have Demon Souls, but I, I really don't think that counts. That's just a fancy remaster. This is this is a true PS5 exclusivo. Exclusivo. You know. uh, Returnal, a game. Oh, I still I'm sorry. To play. I'm sorry. We forgot about Destruction All Stars. That's oh, the first one. That's your God. Dang. Actually, I can't you're probably right. so quick. I um, uh, yeah, Returnal. I don't think any of us have played Returnal, correct? I've no, watched it, but. It's so, it's so weird. Like it, it gets really good reviews. I can't wait to play it, but there are some core gameplay mechanical saving run based decisions they made that make me feel like I'm not going to invest more than an hour or two in this game. And at that point, I'm like, well, I don't want to pay any money for it. I'm just going to wait for PS Plus. Yeah, you know? I, I think I'm on that page, although I, I think most of the save stuff is mitigated now, um, which yeah. is good. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to check that out because I've heard a lot of people falling off of it early because they didn't like dealing with that stuff. And then I've heard a lot of people praising it because they made it all the way through. So I feel like there's some good stuff in there. And if I can get that for like $15 or less or free, then I I will definitely yeah. do. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's just, it's basically if you enjoy being in a game that punishes you really hard, or if you're just like, I like that type of game, but I don't like it to be this difficult constantly. Yeah. Um, and especially if you're the latter person paying 60 bucks for it or 70 bucks for it or whatever, like you're not going to have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was it David from save data paid 70 or did he pay like four? I, think he, I feel like he played it when it came out. Cause he yeah, I can't remember. It. Cause he talked about it, but I, I think it was later after it came out. Uh, anyways, yeah. um, that is it for April. So we're moving into the great month of May. Um, named after the Mayflower. Uh, the 3rd of May, the trial for the Epic Games versus Apple lawsuit was held. Um, it was trial I can, I can tease this. This is basically uh, Epic Games, the way uh, it existed before the lawsuit came around, is Apple would not allow you to use a third-party payment system to pay for things. So if you paid for anything through an app on an Apple device, then Apple would take a cut. I believe it was a 30% cut. 
Epic uh, did a little gamble where they said, you know, we're going to let you buy uh, Fortnite V-Bucks from us directly. Apple banned them and banned Fortnite from the App Store. It led to a trial. I don't think we need to talk about that too much right now because, hint, hint, wink, wink, about four months later, a decision came in. So pins and needles, tune in later. We'll talk about what the uh, actual result of that trial was. Google it. <laughs> um, don't, don't oh, stop. man. Don't. So oh. many game releases. Oh, man. The next game. Next game. Resident Evil Village. Mwah. Good stuff. I good stuff. played good. through Resident Evil 7 right before this, then played Resident Evil 8. Village. Uh, fantastic game. Uh, it, 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 the way Resident Evil 7 uh, took the like Louisiana Bayou cr- true detective craze and ran with it. Uh, Resident Evil Village kind of took the gothic horror Dracula werewolves and ran with that and I think they nailed it uh, so well um, really enjoyed that game really enjoyed playing through it uh, and there's a great Call of Duty section at the end of that game that was really fun uh, so highly recommend checking that game uh, Kyle you want to take this next one thanks oh my gosh uh, obviously one of the biggest releases of the year insofar as like re-releases of stuff. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition was released May 14th, 2021. It's great. I mean, it, it's just a remaster, basically, but it's great. It's, it's beautiful. Um, if you like Mass Effect and you like the story, you can play through it again. And uh, there's a lot of DLC to the point where it's overwhelming. But uh, if mm-hmm. you just play the core story... It's pretty awesome. Uh, One of the most highly regarded uh, storytelling endeavors in a trilogy in video games history. Uh, Not so much with Mass Effect Andromeda, but we we won't talk anymore about that. But yes. Great. The best. The best. It's even better is what I've heard. That's why we don't want to talk about it (laughs) because we don't don't want want it to overshadow the diamond to (laughs) the sun. I feel like this, this is just a great example of, hey, we put these three games out a while ago. People want some more of them. We don't really have that on deck right now. So let's just polish them up, get them running on the latest and greatest consoles, put them out 60 bucks for all three. You can revisit them. You can play them fresh. This is I I wish more studios would do this because there's plenty of older games like Knights of the Old Republic that are very difficult to play now because they barely run um, on any sort of newer machine. If you can even find them like i don't think you can play them on any of the newer consoles you have to like you can play it on the weird... xbox oh you can oh yeah. well, anyways uh or your phone but the... <laughs> yeah but they, but they don't look good they need to be updated so it's yeah. one of those things where it's like this is an easy way for them to take their old property not do a cash cow honestly not put a huge amount of work into it but price it like that mm-hmm. and 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 re-update it for people who want to revisit the series i think that's a great way to do it yep Totally. Uh, Ian, you want to knock this next one out? Yeah, Knockout City. Um, We got kind of a weird subplot going on where Destruction All-Stars was all about Flash and they didn't do any of the mechanics. Then you had Valheim, which really didn't have a lot of Flash to it. It has a cool aesthetic, but no Flash, but all about the mechanics. (laughs) Now we got Knockout City, which is a really cool mix between the two. This one had one of the worst premiere trailers I have ever seen. If you guys remember, it was the one where they kept bringing in uh, other video game characters, but not naming them. And they would talk about random things in a chair, like in a fake documentary format. So they had like an orc from World of Warcraft. They had Samus. Uh, And then you had no idea what it was about. And then it was just a dodgeball. Uh, They tried to present it almost like a dodgeball battle royale, even though that's not what it was. Um, but they, they did a smart thing. They had an open beta for a while. Uh, it came out. They had this weird thing where you could basically play the game for free up to the first like 10 levels of, of the XP system. Um, and it turns out it's mechanically great and it looks good. It's just this weird balance between the two aesthetic and mechanics that we've been talking about. And they're slow rolling it. I don't think it really took off, but I also don't think it died. Uh, it's just It's just nice to see... They, they had some controversies, they had some missteps, they addressed them, and at the end of the day, you've got a really great, accessible, fun-playing game out there for you to play right now. Totally. Um, I just looked up that trailer, because I forgot that trailer was for that game. I, I, I think it was for something else. I saw that trailer. 
it's a terrible trailer. You have no idea what it's for. And it's 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 just bad. Wild. I totally forgot about that. I'll take your word for it. I don't even want to um like, into that. From May to June, uh, June 8th, Chivalry 2 came out, a game I still want to play, but I've never, I haven't bought it or anything like that. Um, it's I an, also another, like, another, like, flavor of the month game. Not not to denigrate the game in any yeah. way, but it, it hit pretty big when it came out. I feel like I need friends to play that game, and uh, actually, no, I've already dug a hole for myself, but I feel like <laughs> I need friends who play video games in groups, like... None of a, I mean, yeah. Kyle, you probably do. This I do. Cool. Yeah, if, if you want to play Chivalry 2, I will oh, play it with you. That's very nice. Actually, my friend Shelby, who sometimes streams, loves that game. So he could probably be a good, like, he could show us around. I feel like I'm always bad at that. Like, Karen plays with her friends all the time, plays all sorts of games. Yeah, and I feel like I'm always just like... They play Dead by Daylight, which no, is... No, they play a lot of different so. games. So. Um, but they also play Deep Rock Galactic, which is also a mediocre game, so... Okay, you're just being hurtful now. <laughs> Deep Rock Galactic... Being- is a fantastic game uh, especially the, fantastic. the 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 past they just added is they actually have a whole subplot now where there's another mining corporation trying to take over and you're like okay, blowing up cool. their stuff it's really cool that's cool uh, and that's it's all cool. free um yeah anyways um chivalry 2 we'll play it at some point it's a promise that i am keeping for 2022 speaking of 2022 uh 2021 <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy I remake. was like, where are you going with remake. this? <laughs> I saw the 2 after the V, and I thought the v, 2. V2. <laughs> Sorry, Final Fantasy V2 uh, Remake Integrate came out uh, for the PS5. That was announced. It had a bunch of DLC stuff. It was the PS5 upgrade version. If you remember, there was a debacle <laughs> where they put uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake on P- PlayStation Plus, and you could not use that to redeem... <laughs> as the uh upgrade version except recently they have now announced that you can do that um god just like had to wait six months you know if you if you own final fantasy 7 remake physical or digital you got a free upgrade to the ps5 version except if you claimed it from the playstation plus that's such bs um but other than that i played a little bit of the game of this game a little bit later in the year it's great i honestly I didn't realize that it ran at 30 FPS on the PS4 until people talked about how the PS5 version runs at 60 FPS. And as somebody as somebody who accidentally played the PS4 version for about 30 minutes, it's bad. 30 (laughs) frames per second sucks, y'all. Really does. So especially in a game like that, that's it's so much of it's like presentational. Exactly. Uh, It it, you the higher frame rate definitely helps. Yeah, Uh, and texture stuff. Absolutely needed the next gen upgrade. Absolutely needed it. Speaking of 30 frames per second sucking, uh, Ratchet and Clank ripped a fart, ripped apart. Um, I played that for about half an hour and then switched it to performance mode where it ups it to 60. And then I could not switch back because it is too good. Even though there's some like, there was some like weird enemy pop in that would happen on performance mode, but I really didn't care because. When you were speeding on the speed booths at 60 frames per second, you were having a blast. Uh, from what I know from other people, another run-of-the-mill, uh, like, good-tier Ratchet & Clank game. Uh, I've never played any other ones. This is my first one, so I exceptionally, enjoy- uh, exceptionally enjoyed it. Um, uh, either of you play it? No? Um, yes. and I, I don't have a PlayStation 5. Oh, so. right. I, I have not because it's a combination of wanting to save money and also this game has not dropped down in price enough like i was actually looking at today to possibly purchase it for the christmas break and it's still 50 bucks um so i'm waiting for it to drop some more in price i've heard fantastic things about it i think the other thing is that this feels like between the xbox series x and the playstation 5 this feels like the actual true first next gen title the medium didn't quite hit well enough destruction all stars is god awful um like returnal's good but it it, it it had some some problems where Ratchet and Clank felt like universally loved and also like this is a next gen title and deserves I, the exclusivity. I think I also hundred percented it because it's pretty. Hey, easy. It's, it's not some crazy thing to do, but I like at least went back and got all the stuff. Um, the very next day, folks, E three twenty twenty one was held as an online event. Um. I what can't, a wild, do you guys remember? I don't remember. 
I I watched. I don't even remember some any big. Yeah. I don't even remember no. any big announcements other than Sony continuing to boycott it because they're babies. I remember the big announcements from the from the Game Awards thing during the summer, but I don't remember anything Didn't from do, this. Was was there was there the Starfield trailer? Was that where that trailer dropped? Oh, was did Xbox have a thing? Maybe, no, because I had eleven, eleven, twenty-two. It was this year. It was this year. Yeah, yeah, it was this year. Yeah, you're right. You're All right. right. That's like the only thing I can remember. Yeah, I don't remember much. And this year in review is only what we can remember. So, uh, <laughs> sucks to be a lot you, of listener. Uh, Google it. Um, we talked about games that we stopped uh, early during streaming. Of, uh, oh my gosh! Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. Uh, I believe about halfway through, uh, Ian yeah. was just looking up Gundam. The- uh, I was yes, trying to keep great. it held together because it it really wasn't that bad. Uh, it was not good. Right. The only reason I remember it. this game is because you had it as one of the mini game game show uh, things. We had to guess what the yes. critical rating was. And I was like, oh, it's Dungeons and Dragons. Like, it's probably pretty popular. Maybe it did good. And you were like, no, <laughs> I think it was like 54 or yeah, something like it that. Was, it was real bad. This is another example of they're like, hey, Warhammer Vermintide is really popular. What if we made that and brought back one of our old series to do that? But what if we made it terrible? Um, yeah, it was it was also kind of weird because it wasn't it wasn't just like a label slap where they're like, it's a generic game with Dungeons and Dragons on top. Like they were going off of established yeah. popular Dungeons and Dragons characters from Wild. the decades old lore. And they just woofed it so bad. Like, it was buggy. It also didn't play well. It didn't feel good. There was, like, issues with the AI. Like, like half the time, the AI would just stand there and take your attacks, like, literally not doing anything. It, it just had, like, no gameplay depth to it at all. Yeah, just not not good. Not good. It was wild. Um, so, after that debacle... Nintendo decided to release Mario Golf uh, Super Rush, a game I was looking forward to until everyone said not to buy it because it's not that great. Um, Yeah. I think this is one of those games that the same way I just have every uh, N64 game in like 30 years, I'll I'll be like, oh, two bucks for Mario Golf Super Rush. Yo, no, this game is pretty good. I'll play this and like playing it with my grandkids or or imaginary grandkids. Um. I think that's kind of where it's going to be, but I was I was hoping it was going to be more solid. When- yeah, it felt like it felt like people were saying, hey, this is one of those games where there's golf in it and there's a couple modes of golf and that's pretty much it. Like there is not nearly enough content in year for replayability, let alone a $60 price tag. And that was that was upsetting because I was looking forward to it just the same as you. Yeah. It came out a week before I left for Japan. And when I got there, there was still a ton of advertisements up everywhere. And like in oh. the, the subway or the, um, the the metro cars and everything, I didn't see you see a lot of people playing their switches on the trains, especially in Japan. I did not see a single person playing that game. They're all playing like I think I saw Breath of the Wild. I saw some Smash Brothers and I saw like a, a like a lot of Nintendo stuff, but not that game. Yeah. Wild. Um, does anyone know anything about this next game? Yeah, this this is worth calling out. I feel like this was another one that blew up uh, Scarlet Nexus anime title. Uh, this is uh, kind of a I think It's kind of like an action RPG type of game. This one, it felt like it hit out of nowhere and just a lot of people were talking about it for a bit. Uh, I, I thought it deserved to mention this is new IP. It's uh, anime focused in a way. And so to see it just kind of hit the mainstream and a lot of people praise it. I believe it's on Game Pass now. I've installed it. I do want to hit it. Maybe I'll play it over the holiday break. I don't know. It just felt like uh, and part of this part of this review was like talking about the big hits. But I also wanted to point out things and be like, hey, you did a great job here, Scarlet Nexus. You launched a great title that everybody loved. Good for you, you know? <laughs> yeah, I remember... Otherwise it's, just, it's, otherwise, it's just all Blizzard news. Uh, Activision Blizzard news for the rest of the year, you know? Yeah, I remember David uh, speaking pretty highly of it. That was the one where you, like, had the secret, like, side powers and stuff. And you, yeah, and there were security you could pick your cameras. team and link them up. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, ending June and beginning July, Sony with some acquisitions here on the 29th of June, they acquired Housemark, makers of Returnal. Uh, they became a part of PlayStation Studios. And then on July 1st, uh, Sony acquired Nix's software, uh, which I believe is 
they do a lot of PC porting. What they were doing makes this yeah smart. kind of, smart yeah and, it, and then teasing. Um, I don't think we actually have it in here, but I think in the second half of the year is when Sony really started ramping up some of their PC announcements. Like we're gonna have some. I can't remember. Yeah, is God, it of God of War, God, God of War, God of War, Uncharted Four, and Lost Legacy. So, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. So they uh, they'd already released uh, Horizon by this point on the PC. So just kind of a gradual turn in Sony's uh, exclusivity fight, saying you know PCs outside of the console fight, so we can release to that as well. Um, yeah. And Housemark makes sense. You know, Returnal was a big hit. Um, and it makes sense for them to bring them into the fold to make sure that they are making Sony games going forward. Totally. Uh, and then on July 7, uh, 16th, uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. I know someone who paid full price for this game. I paid full price because, look, I like Zelda games and I like Nintendo. And I thought this is the perfect opportunity for them to fix all the problems people have with the original one, which is mostly around controls. Mm -mm. And it turns out that no. they didn't fix them. And I'm going to be honest with you. The, the, the Nintendo switch controls on this are so bad that I feel like I actually would have preferred it on a Wiimote and nunchuck. That's just, it's just, this is a bad remake. This is them upping the graphics, but just taking like zero time to actually look into okay, what are the main complaints about this game and how do we actually fix those as opposed to being like, well, they don't have a Wiimote, so what should we do? Yeah, I guess we'll just throw it on this button and do that. And uh, you have to hold down a bumper in order to use the look stick and it's just awful. I play sure this for three, four hours. Every time. Yeah. I mean, honestly, other than that, I was enjoying the story. I liked the look. I liked the gameplay. It's just, it was so awful to control that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle more than two three and hours of it. i know they updated a bunch of the quality of life stuff like the the yeah. the, the un, unescapable like dialogue boxes and the yeah. whatever her name is and the every item que what, told what's, you what's what it the was. little your Fee. little guide thing Fee? Tingle. yeah yeah tingle <laughs> i love um, tingle yeah remember you tried to yeah. shame tingle by calling him <clears throat> ugly <sighs> yeah he is he's a he's beautiful, a beautiful man. little man <laughs> i love him um, here comes the big one, folks. On 720, that is July 20th for you in Europe, uh, the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, DFEH, initiated a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard, Blizzard following a two year investigation oh. asserting the company maintained a hostile Blizzard. workplace uh, that discriminated and harassed female employees, leading to thousands of employees signing onto an open letter and performing a walkout demanding management take action. Now, you might think that's the worst thing Blizzard and Blizzard management did this year, but folks, you would be wrong. You'd be so oh boy. wrong. Oh boy. Can't um, wait till we get a little bit later on. This is all where it started, guys. <laughs> all where it started. Ugh, Actually, wild. you know, honestly, I, I don't think we have too many other later news items because they were just coming so fast and heavy that I don't even think they made the Wikipedia list because it was literally like three or four revelations a day at, at some point. Yeah, that's true. Um, basically, like, you know, we don't need to dive into this too deep, but basically Activision Blizzard, very toxic culture, executives enforced that culture to the extent that people were were... Uh, fired or harassed or suicidal because of how the company was treating them and their complaints. It came down from the top. Kodak <laughs> is involved in it, and you should probably just absolutely stay away from Activision Blizzard until they fix this because they have done absolutely nothing to fix this. Um, lawsuits still pending. All these accusations are still active, and literally there's been... It, it's it's been the opposite instead of activision blizzard doing something to fix it the only thing they've done since then is actually make it worse uh which is crazy yeah wild. absolutely wild uh and the same day death's door was released for uh windows xbox systems e any of you play it i it's kind of on my list i don't even remember it it doesn't really yeah it's it's on my list too. It's 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 a bird themed Zelda like, but this is one I wanted to call out because this is another indie title that hit big, and this and I I don't think I don't think it'll be on our game of the year list just because none of us played it, but it's on a lot of game of the year lists. Um, a lot of praise for this one. So so good for you, indie indie titles. Good, good for, for you, you. Death Store. Uh, yeah. and then the very next day, uh, Poka uh, 
Copyright Mon Unite um, Elon came Musk's out. son? Uh, Copyright sorry. Mon. <laughs> Pokemon Unite came out. Sorry, the way this Wikipedia or the way Google Sheets interpreted <laughs> the E with an accent on it <laughs> is an A yeah, with a squig so capital weird. A with a squiggly over it and a copyright symbol. Um <laughs> wild. Um so that came out. I, I didn't play any of this. It's the Pokemon MOBA. I, I did. I did a stream of it, and oh, honestly, right. it's pretty good. It's a very good I don't want to call it baby's first MOBA, but it's a very good job of like 10, 15 minute matches, teaches you basic MOBA mechanics without punishing you too much. It's got some Pokemon in it. I feel like my biggest complaint is the monetization is is a little nasty just because you can buy some items that you hold that literally make your Pokemon more powerful in game. So it's not just cosmetic stuff. And it also there was there was some long load screens and some times where it chugged a little bit like it would stutter a little bit. But honestly, this is I've not played a lot of MOBAs. I'm not a MOBA fan, but this is one of my favorite. It was like 10, 15 minute match times. It was so simple and easy to get in and get out. I It was actually kind of a bad stream because I was getting into matches and I was silent for like five minutes because I was just so focused on the game. So uh, kind of a crazy free to play MOBA success starring Pokemon from Tendo. Crazy. Pretty wild. Uh, and that rounds out July. Going into August, uh, more Blizzard news. Uh, President J. Allen Brack uh, left the company in the wake of the DFEH lawsuit. Um, I, I don't know if he was directly implicated in stuff, but obviously president of I, Blizzard. I, it depends on how you define directly implicated. I believe that he was he was implicated in allowing these things to continue yes, slash yeah, yeah, not yeah. punishing people enough. But he wasn't uh, the McCree. Who was no, a person who who did things? Um, and That's if you right. like embracing, like the creeps did, uh, the Embracer Group uh, acquired eight additional studios, uh, including 3D Realms, Ghost Ship Games, makers of Deep Rock Galactic, and Slipgate Ironworks. Um, <laughs> Embracer embracing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's wild. Uh, cool. Moving on next. Axiom Verge 2 came out on August 11th, my parents' anniversary. Uh, if you would like any more information, please email me. Um, Axiom Verge 2. Uh, That's how I send all my gifts. Direct deposit. <laughs> yes, always. Um, either you play Axiom Verge 2 or 1. I, I, I really want to. This Axiom Verge 1 was really popular. Axiom Verge 2, it feels like it's just as good, if not better. Um, I, I wanted to call this one out because this feels like a great indie game that didn't get enough attention. I think it got a little bit lost behind uh, some of the other titles we'll talk about shortly, like Psychonauts 2, Splitgate, even Lost amidst the Blizzard insanity. And then just eight days later, 12 minutes came out, which is like an immediate game of the year, game of the decade, lived up oh, to yeah. all of the hype. Wish there uh, were more minutes. Honestly, it, a game so bad and so so like so uh i forgot the word Awful. that it took up <laughs> no so divisive that it took up so much of the of like that 24 48 72 hour gaming news cycle that uh i, I think unfortunately axiom verge 2 got lost in it so i wanted i wanted to call it out 12 minutes came out on do the 19th. Do we need to talk about... No, let's not look, talk about it. It's need, a terrible game. No, the characters just, react let, yeah. to anything Can properly. we talk about it in less than one minute? Just just very, very blaring. Don't play this game. I didn't play it, but hearing all the problems with it make me never want to touch it. It does not live up to the hype at all. Don't play this game. Period. Don't play it. If Don't you're interested it. at all, just watch someone else play it on YouTube. Yeah. I, or I, maybe I, just skip to the end. I didn't or, yeah, I would just watch a spoiler video. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Uh, speaking of not good, Psychonauts, no. Uh, Psychonauts I was going to say, what? <laughs> I haven't played it, so it could be not good. I haven't. I Schrodinger, a Schrodinger Psychonauts. Um, came out, Psychonauts 2 came out, finally, after 18,000 years of Yeah, it's uh, crazy, and Supreme Fig, Lord. it was a Fig game. It launched Fig, the crowdfunding investment platform. Uh, Supreme Lord Tim Schafer uh, ordained this uh, back when he became emperor, and it finally came out. Uh, I'm very excited to play it eventually because I tried Psychonauts 1 and I... Um, so I will play this at some point. 
<laughs> David, if you're ever listening to this, glad it came out. But glad this was your year. Now yeah. all of us get our other <laughs> game. Uh, Ian, I know you like this next one. Yeah, uh, this is, uh, in case you haven't detected the theme, I like to call out Indie Flavor of the Month games in this list. Do you remember Splitgate? I certainly do. It was a crazy Halo Portal free-to-play FPS multiplayer game, and uh, it's awesome, and people loved it so much that you basically, I think, I think... For those first couple days, you had to queue for like an hour just to get into the what? servers to matchmake. And people were sitting there waiting for it because the game just feels so good. Like, it just, I remember we streamed it and it was just like the shooting just felt so good. It feels very Halo like, but then you add the portals and they implemented it just perfectly. That adds like layers upon layers upon layers of strategic depth as you unlock it. And uh, one thing I want to call out is I feel like the matchmaking was so, so good where it was kind of skill-based matchmaking because in a game like this with the portals, things can get complicated and mechanically deep very quickly. But I feel like they did such a fantastic job of like, Oh, Based on your level, we're going to assume you don't know the portals that well or like the portal meta. So I never really ended up in a match where there was somebody just like going crazy good with the portals and dominating all of us. But I guarantee you if the matchmaking was bad and there's one person in the lobby who knows that they would have dominated it. So it felt like you were it felt like every time you were matchmaking, you were always pretty much on the same level, not just in terms of skill in the game, but also like how to use the portals like you hadn't figured out all the tricks and none of your opponents or allies had figured out all the tricks either just a great game i think it's still doing really well great indie success just awesome and i think i think recently didn't they get like they got additional venture capital funding for a hundred million dollars to continue to develop the game i think it may have even been more than that i'll look it up real quick it's crazy crazy popular uh while you're looking that up we move from august to september and just two days after my birthday, uh, Epic Games versus Apple. Apple was given a permanent injunction preventing them from blocking <laughs> apps that include links to third-party payment systems. Um, yes. Which is pretty crazy. Um, although, like, reading that off, Apple basically still won. Like, that was the one thing they really had to concede was the payment systems. But they were ruled to not be monopolistic, which is sort of what Epic, I mean, depending on who you listen to, is sort of what Epic's ultimate goal was to was to say, like, OK, you shouldn't have this much mono a monopoly based on, mm -hmm. you know, you selling your games via the App Store. And uh, they they the judge upheld that Apple was not in in any way uh, forming a monopoly. And didn't yeah, they, 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 they they didn't reduce the uh, they allow Apple to continue their 30 percent pay cut. And they also say that Apple was okay in, in banning app Epic Games because of their actions. Yeah. Um, but this this is still a pretty big hit to Apple that they now have to allow these third party payment systems because depending on the, depending on the apps, there's a lot of revenue coming through there um, that they're essentially cut out of if it goes to the third party payment system. Didn't they recently though? They kicked it down further because. They like made it so they don't have to implement the third party the third party payment system until like something happens. Can't remember what it was. Sure. There's there, a recent there's thing about something like that. I can't remember specifically though. Yeah, because I think. Um, yeah, right? I, I I will just say the funny thing is so Epic kind of got what they wanted in that they can now sell V Bucks in Fortnite. However. Epic is still banned from Apple, so <laughs> <laughs> so they got what they wanted, but they can't actually get to it because they're still banned, which is funny. Can't do anything. Uh, on the same day, actually, WarioWare Get It Together came out for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I have played this game quite extensively. Uh, it was my first real WarioWare game. I know people have a lot of issues with it because it's missing some of the core features or you have to play a lot to unlock them. Um, I've enjoyed it. Uh, Karen and I have been playing through the campaign uh, and you kind of like get to choose characters and they're the random characters added to the mini game and each character has their own ability. So like someone uh, might always be swimming. Some guy when you hit a always jumps, but they're always moving back and forth. Uh, it plays really well. Some of those can be super frustrating when you're forced because uh, every level you're forced to use the new character you're unlocking. 
So those kind of suck mm-hmm. sometimes when that character's ability isn't great, but once you beat that level, you never have to touch that character again. Um, also, so, yay for intelligent systems. They did Fire Emblem. Yeah. So. Yay! Always, always a fan. We love Fire Emblem WarioWare. Um, I always romance Wario uh, and have tea with him like one of my students. <laughs> Um, and then on the 14th, which is also the day that Halo ODST came out, uh, Cruisin' Blast, uh, Raw Thrills, uh, and, and Switch. Anyone play this game? No, but another one that apparently is really good, kind of came out of nowhere, and people really like. I, I can't wait to play this. I, I think it's 40 bucks. I want the price to come down a little bit, and then I'll play it. Um... But yeah, this is one of those like surprise success stories I, I wanted to mention. Um, surprise! Speaking of surprise success stories, let's talk about the most overrated game of the year, also on September 14th, Deathloop from Arcane Studios. Sorry, I think we all know that I don't like out, this game. DST. I, Kyle, I, I, don't think, I don't think we've talked to you about Deathloop. No, I have not played it. But um, I have watched several friends of mine play it in the same like in the same room watching them. And then the amount of reviews that I've watched, I have a pretty good idea that I wouldn't like this game. And this is something that I didn't know until I started looking into it. There's only like realistically, there's only one enemy type in the entire game. And they're they're I mean, the Juliet yeah. is, you know, technically another enemy type, but they're all really stupid. The AI is yep. not good. Like it's real bad, um, and I've heard that the the looping mechanic is implemented well, but there's no like like time like you would think in a game called Death Loop that deals with time manipulation, time would be more of a factor while playing the game, and it's yeah. really not. It's it's not <laughs> like you have a time crunch that I, I don't know. I, I I from what I've seen and from what I've what I've watched people play, I was not super impressed by it. Um, I think I just watched a review the other day or, or maybe it was yesterday or something. Uh, but they said that arcane did this way better in uh, moon crash. The, the prey oh, DLC the prey that came DLC? out, it was sort of like the same sort of thing. And they said that it was, it was better implemented in that than it was in death loop, which is an entirely mm-hmm. separate game. So yeah, I, I enjoyed death loop. Um, I think my issues with it stem from, Definitely, I was hoping, like you said, time was more of a factor. Like, I would be setting things up in one area and then being able to advance time and then watch things pop off, which there are things you do like that, but it's more like if I get to this area in the morning, I can stop this building from burning down and then at night I can go into that. Mm. Yeah, um, it's it's less of a it's less of a sandbox or a Rube Goldberg machine and more of like a shortcut in a way sure. of like, oh, I open this door by doing this event that allows me to then access something later. Yeah, totally. And I think the story is really cool. Uh, I kind of like some of the reveals and the way it plays out and, and the voice acting uh, between the two main characters is is very well done. Um, but. I think only having one possible route to the ending is kind of lame uh, in a game that seems to have so many different yeah, choices I and the ways of doing things. And having I one can't of those... believe that's, that's how it plays out, because I only played the first couple hours, but I can't believe it comes down to there is one route. That sounds so counterintuitive to the game being yeah. like, there's multiple paths, do this and then do I that, like do this and then that. And God, There were two awful. sides arguing, like, we want to tell a story, we want to make a sandbox, and they met in the middle and couldn't push one or the other to the other side. Also, the ending is very yeah. ambiguous and not, I didn't think, was very clear. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Um, I still think it's a fantastic game. I, I had a blast playing it, um, but uh, hindsight's twenty twenty one. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> That's the t-shirt. <laughs> uh, next, on the 16th, uh, Skate Bird came out. Yeah, uh, A game where you skate as a bird. We actually have a documentary up on our YouTube channel, subpixelfilms.com. Bring straight to that if you'd like to watch it. Um, either of you play Skate Bird, I did not touch or skate the, the bird. I did. I played about two hours of it. I think I streamed it. I can't remember if I streamed it or not, but I, I did play uh, an hour or two. Uh, it was not going to lie. It was it was a little bit rough on release, but they very quickly patched a lot of the camera issues. Um, a lot mm-hmm. of the sometimes you would like stick to geometry and, and it was just kind of weird. 
Um, there's been a ton of quality of life updates since then, and I think they're on patch like 1.6 or 1.7, and it's it's good. I mean, it's fun. It's sort of just a chill skater game with a really good soundtrack, uh, and it's quirky. And and if you like birds and and little tech deck dudes with birds instead of tech deck dudes, uh, it's it's great. Sweet, awesome. Uh, and the next day, Delta Rune two, Delta Rune chapter two, Delta Rune. Yeah, this is I I enjoyed Undertale. Woo-hoo. Um, a Delta Rune Chapter One was kind of just—I didn't play it, but it sounded like this weird thing where it's just like, "Hey, maybe we'll do something in the Delta Undertale universe, kind of, but a little weird little freebie thing." And then I was not <laughs> expecting Chapter Two this soon, so I—I I, I just kind of wanted to call this out where uh, Undertale's not dead, baby, and Delta Rune is not super slow either. This is coming out more, so I, I'm excited to try this eventually. But I, I think I may wait for all—I'm assuming there's five chapters. That's just an assumption. I think I may wait for all five to, to try it out. What, what's your, any of y'all play uh, any Undertale or Delta Rune? I tried Undertale and I I could not get into it. That was you know several years ago, so maybe I'll give it another run. But I I have not touched it since. I've tried twice mm-hmm. and I I've fallen off full time. It's a little it's it's different, but once you once you get into it and you kind of appreciate what it is, it's a blast. Yeah, I, I'm just not into games where like it takes a while to get into it. You know. I was like, yeah, that's fair. why would I spend all that time trying to get into it? Why can't the game just be good from the get go? Yeah. Uh, speaking of games <laughs> that aren't good, uh, no. Diablo 2 Resurrected was released. Um, I bought this. I downloaded I'm so, it. I'm so sorry. I think I launched it. I don't know. And then I refunded <sighs> it. It wasn't because of the quality or anything of it. I've heard it's actually gotten a lot better. Um, there wasn't that much wrong with it, but they patched a lot of stuff. Um, it was mostly a the whole Blizzard stuff, and B uh, I had zero time with a brand new job to play any amount of a like Diablo video. I, I'm trying to remember what were the complaints about this because this didn't hit very well and it didn't review very well. Very I think well. it had um, I think it had a lot not a lot of bugs, but I think some of the balancing issues at launch with characters, mm-hmm. and then I think I think. There was like loot stuff that wasn't balanced. Can't quite. Huh. Um, but yeah, I, I will definitely, when I finally get the urge uh, to play through Diablo 2, I'll probably buy the resurrected version because uh, it does look fantastic. Yeah. Um, and very and very faithful to the original. They just kind of did the, hey, it's going to look the same. It's just going to be able to run at much higher resolution, higher frame rate now. Totally. Uh, the next day, Death Stranding Director's Cut was released. Um, I am a huge Death Stranding proponent. Uh, great game, great gameplay, mediocre story, uh, great world building. Um, I have not touched the Director's Cut. Um, I've been meaning to. I just, again, didn't have the time. It's only a $10 upgrade from owning the PS4 version, which is pretty neat. Uh, so I will do that. Oh, maybe I'll do that over break. I do have a week. Um, this one's just such a weird release because I I think that I can't think of any other examples where a game comes out. It's it tends to lean towards negative reviews from a lot of people. Then the director's gut comes out. What is it, a year or two later? And the amount of reviews that are leaning towards positive and a lot of it doesn't have to do with the content in the director's cut. It's just people taking an opportunity to revisit the game. And it's just so weird to see that swing from negative to positive. Again, not based on the content of the director's cut, but people just taking the opportunity to give the game a second shot. Um, so yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's one of the most successful director's cut in gaming history when you look at it from that perspective of, of critical reception. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I think it's especially like the Dan Reichert story where he hated this game when he reviewed it and then... I believe the past couple, past month, he could finally play through it at his own pace, and I think he was much more into it because he was he wasn't rushing for a deadline or missing cutscenes stuff like that. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really like Death Stranding. It's it's wild. It's its own thing. Not for everyone, but certainly my cup of tea. Uh, and then on the twenty eighth, uh, Netflix acquired Night School Studio as its first game studio. Um, we have oh we have the other 
Um, Netflix slowly moving yeah. towards gaming. Uh, they have another thing coming up. They also um, forget when this was, but they uh, they revoked all licenses to uh, their properties from other games. So Dead by Daylight. Uh, I just know this one because they lost uh, oh. the Demigorgon and the characters. So people who own the Demigorgon and characters can still play them in-game um, and use them, but can no longer purchase them. from. Uh, Is and it I just like blurred out for people? <laughs> yeah, it's blurred out and their names have been changed, but I don't believe the character models changed. Um, yeah, this is this is part of Netflix's uh, public but slow push towards making their own games. Um, it's just kind of weird because they're being so slow about it. And right now, we'll, we'll talk about the other news point in a bit, but basically they're just using their existing games that were on other platforms and just having them as mobile games through the Netflix mobile app. And it's just like, you're kind of doing it, but not really. But you're also like, instead of being like, we're going to have Netflix game studios make a game for the PlayStation 5. They're like, no, it's going to be a game on the Netflix platform. Ooh. But it's like, does that mean it's an interactive story? And they're like, no, it's an it's a game. It's not a Bandersnatch type thing. And it's just like, what are you what are you doing over there? You just throwing money at the wall till something You're sticks. Okay. Yeah. Um same day, Outer Wilds, Echoes of the Eye DLC came out. Another thing on the Will Crosby list uh, to get to eventually. Um, big fan of Outer Wilds. I heard this DLC was extremely good. Um, so I definitely want to check that out. Uh, either of you play the DLC? I know. I think both of you um, played Outer Wilds, right? Yeah. Kyle hasn't played Outer Wilds? Oh, you should Outer play Outer Wilds. Wilds. I, it's great. I, which okay which came first outer wilds or outer worlds i think wilds came first oh no okay. wait was it at the same day i can't remember i just uh, remember being super confused when it I'll, came out i'll look it up I'll i played up. i played outer worlds and was so turned off by it after like six hours which is weird because i like obsidian and that's sort of right up my alley i just could not get into it um, and then, like, every time I think of Outer Wilds, I think of Outer Worlds, oh. and I'm like, I don't want to play that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I know Outer it's, Wild like, great, though. I, I, need to, yeah. I need to get on it. Outer Wilds was five months earlier, May 2019 yeah. okay. versus October. I was going to say, I was like, I don't think it was the same day, but I thought it was closer than five months, uh, though. Was, I thought it was, it like, was, the same. It was Outer Wilds and, um, shoot, what's the what's the rogue FPS in... Bastards or something, space bastards. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, 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 yeah, void, void bastards. bastards. Void yes, bastards. Yes. Great. Um, yeah, outer, outer wilds is it's it's a great game, um, and it's it's cool to see them. If you know anything about outer wilds, it's not really open to DLC. So for them to come out and be like, we're making DLC was like, what? How? And then the way I, I've been spoiled a little bit, so the way they do it makes sense and it pays off, and it's just an opportunity for them to. Uh, add some more ideas to the Outer Wilds universe. Cool. I definitely need to get into it, so I think yeah. I'll make that my my January game that I that I get into. Uh, this is a wild because it's quite out there. Uh, on the 30th, Sony Interactive Entertainment Oof. acquired Bluepoint Games, uh, makers of the remake of Demon Souls, and I. What are they working on now? Demons Holes. That's it. Yeah, it's Demon Demons Holes. Um, Demon joined Shoals. PlayStation Studios. Uh, Sony out there making acquisitions. Demo skulls. Um, they're working on something new now. I can't. <laughs> what? It... I think they, they said it's Colossus as well. Didn't they say they're making their own IP now? No, they're making their own PP. Oh, Bloodborne. The rumor is Bloodborne. Uh, you tackle is... the next one there for me. Yeah, let me just. I just need to Google. Oh, it was Metal Gear. Is Pier, Blue it? Point making their own PP? Mm -hmm. answers yes uh next up this this one was weird because this hit two or three weeks after cruising blast it's hot wheels unleashed <laughs> another arcade racing title it felt like there was a mini renaissance of arcade racing titles between these two games alone another game coming out of nowhere getting great reviews a lot of people saying hey this is awesome i believe subpixel zone jake terrio purchased this on a whim and was really enjoying it um just uh, I, I'm not saying that there's anything special about 2021, but it feels like this year there was just a lot of indie games and out of nowhere games that hit because they were good. 
and they got the attention they deserved. And I'm just really happy about that. It feels like sometimes some years you get games like Fortnite that just blow up for all the wrong reasons. Um, and I'm glad this year we had a lot of different hits where people sat down, they made a fantastic game, and they earned that popularity and publicity on the game's merit and not because of publishing or not because of weird circumstances. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to rocket blast these next couple. Uh, Alan Wake Remastered came out. Oh, sorry, that was the end of September. Now it's October. Alan Wake Remastered came out. Alan Wake is a fantastic game. Go play it, especially remastered version. I got to get into that. Nickelodeon All Star Brawl came out. The Nickelodeon attempt at making a it's crazy it's Super Smash, Smash Brothers. Brothers game. It's crazy. Um, Smash yeah. everything. I want. I want a Smash Brothers genre with, with wanna, a new release every month. Yeah, and then those Smash well, Brothers against Smash That'd Brothers. Be great. Far Cry Six yeah. uh, came out on the seventh. Um, will game because he's an idiot. I, I will never let you I, live that down. I, I don't I hate you so much. I just sometimes. find it so funny that we talked about it beforehand. You're like, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And then but you're that, just that, like, that so no... I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. I bought it because every Far Cry game has done enough differently to separate it from <laughs> itself. It doesn't matter. But, uh, it's funny. Though, I, I feel like the thing that actually offends me is that we had talked about with Far Cry and other games about being like, hey, people stop buying the same game every year, every couple of year. You need to punish them with your wallet before they do something interesting and exciting with it. And then you go out and buy the game. I, see, I don't I don't remember any of that. Um, I oh. bought Far Cry 6 because I like the Far Cry series and I want to see if they were doing anything different. Uh, but they it is basically five in Cuba versus five was four in America, but added a lot of different things. Like they were actually trying new things by adding yeah, and systems. Four was four was three in Asia. No, no, the other one, two, three, and four were pretty different from each other. Three and four were probably the closest no. of those, but four and five were much more closer. And then five and six are just pretty much carbon copies. I well, I I what I'm saying is that six, five, and four are really just copies of three. Of three, they, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, but I, I would agree I, with I, that. I would argue that four and five add enough to make it different, and I don't think six did that at all. Yeah, the six is just yeah. more of the buddies system, more of the vehicles and stuff, and Actually, it just like four really added a whole lot though, did it? I I just when I think of story, four, though. which I've only played like a little bit of, the the one thing from four that I remember is if you don't do anything at the very beginning, you can beat yeah. the game just by sitting, which I thought was amazing. Um, six has like, that too, which is pretty was was a pretty good mode. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that's cool but I, like when i think of far cry i think of far cry 2 which is the first one i ever played and i really liked it because the for some one. reason that game ran so well on my computer um <laughs> and then far cry 3 was just because it was like it, it was sort of like was a, re, a, a revamping it was like a little bit more cinematic they had um uh not michael pena what's his name he's on better call saul as as vaz um it, like it, it was it also was just, like it was such a good open world game yeah. that games today are still copying a lot of the open world mechanics from Far yeah. Cry 3. They added yep. um, Predators to that game. Hunting. Hunting. The whole hunting sort of... crafting well, system was... was really well done. Hunting and crafting was in Far Cry 2, but there were no Predators. It's one of the, it's one okay. of the few games I actually like, enjoyed. I remember enjoying hunting. Yeah, because like yeah. they have hunting in Red Dead Two, and I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care yeah, at all bad. about. They're like, oh, you can upgrade this stuff. I was like, no. But I remember I actually did. I think I 100 percented that game. Yeah, Far, like, Far Cry Three. Like Far Cry it was Three. Like, it was good. I wanted to go hunting, like you're saying. Versus Red Dead, it's like if I if I end up like I have to decide to go hunting. Where Far yeah. Cry Three, you could like fall into it easily. It's such uh, a oh, huge yeah. deviation in Red Dead from like story to like here's all these side things you can do. Whereas like Far Cry Three, it was like, oh hey, I'm in this area, I'm just gonna go like collect all. I forget how exactly it's broken up, but it was like and I'm gonna go get like, a Gila monster. You would walk or up to it and he just pulls the gross skin and puts yeah. it in the bed. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what yeah. they started doing. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Gross. So yes. good. Uh, so long story short, I still don't know why he bought Far Cry Six. Um, uh, because I wanted to play a Far Cry game. Far Cry's good. Anyways, uh, moving on to... You know, honestly, it's probably about time to replay 3. Yeah. 
I was I, replaying I, two with Chris. We were doing a stream, and modern computers do not like Far Cry Two uh, because yeah, characters were sliding all over the all over the place. Yeah, like going into it's, walls. I I tried to replay it. Well, I never really played it, so I tried to play it recently, and it took about an hour to get it set up because because I was like, "There's like these are the mods to do to get it running. These are the mods to do it to make it a little bit more palatable. These are the mods to do to skip these bugs." And then I played it for about two hours, and it's a little bit too old for me to get into it. Um, but three, three probably still kicks. That game. Do you guys ever watch Crobcat on YouTube? He does a lot of comparison mm -hmm. videos between. Um, older games and and the mechanics that were worked into them versus their newer counterparts. Well, he does one on the differences between Far Cry 2 and I think it was Far Cry 5. And like the fire spreading mechanic in 2, which was oh yeah, super oh, impressive yeah. back in the day is so much more impressive than what happens in Far Cry 5. It's insane. And there's like they had um individual uh like limbs you could shoot that people the enemies would react to and two like you could shoot someone in the foot or the leg and if their buddy was next to them they would pick them and drag them away from the fight mm -hmm. doesn't happen in far cry 5 and it was just like uh, some two, of the some of the differences in that are insane in two you could like shoot like twigs off of trees yeah, I remember yeah, that. There was like foliage, like the foliage deformed more. And and you'd have to look down more, at your map yeah. while driving because yep. they didn't want Which an in-game map. Which was the worst thing ever. Oh, they yeah. didn't want a menu map? Yeah. So good. So good. Um, moving on, because uh, we've been doing this for a while. On the 8th, Metroid Dread came out. I have not touched Metroid Dread. I don't think either of us have... I, any of us I am half, halfway through. Oh, you have About been halfway it. through, yes. How are you like my, my brother lent it to me. It's, it's the... I'm kind of ashamed to say this. Other than revisiting Animal Crossing uh, for updates, just to like see what happened, I have not touched my Switch at all, aside from Metroid Dread. Um, wow. That's fine. I just... I don't use it that Same. much, but I'm so glad that... I have one to play Metroid Dread because it's really good so far. Like it's, it's sort of has enough callbacks and, and sort of reminders of, of growing up playing Metroid fusion and zero mission on, on game boy. Um, I'm having a really good time with it. It's super difficult. And I think that it's, I think I'm getting to the point where the difficulty is going to like taper off a little bit where it's like, okay, I fully understand all these systems. Um, navigating is, weirdly easy uh which is weird because metroid i always I, I always remember looking back on like there were certain places you could remember via little like landmarks that you could go to and this sort of has that same thing but it's a little bit different i don't know it, it's, mm -hmm. it's it's just one of those weird things with a with a 2d platformer shooter kind of thing they they found a way to do it that makes sense and um i, I just i i really like it so far i'm i really want to beat it though so i can get it out of my way <laughs> Because I need to play That's inscription. Awesome. I um yes. I want to try Metroid Dread. I've I've only played a little bit of Super Metroid. That's the only Metroid mm -hmm. game I've played. So I, I think it'd be fun, fun to try that. I I highly recommend playing Zero Mission. That's that's Zero the Mission? one I sort of grew up on and I played so many times. What's I like one? Fusion though. F uh Game Boy Advanced, I think. I, f yes, I remember I'm playing, playing it on it. SP. Yeah, it's, I can play it on my SP. <laughs> it's also got really I, good music. Actually, Kyle, it's weird. You made me realize. I think I own a copy of it, and what? I just can play it on my SP. That's great. Incredible. Wow. This flight's Please gonna be it. awesome. <laughs> um, speaking of flights, uh, I flew towards the twelfth of October for Back for Blood. Uh, it was. Uh, we don't have to talk about this. It's Left for Dead. It's the a game. Left for Dead, but it's not very good, and it I... has cards in it. I, it's weird. I I feel like this would be this this is not a a great game, but it's also not as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah. Um. It's all right. It. Yeah. I've, I've sunk. It's, I think like twenty hours into it, or like twenty twenty five, and like it's fine. It's yeah, not it's bad. Fine. Yeah. I I we we joked about this a little bit, but I I I don't think it's true. I think if you want to play Left for Dead or Left for Dead. Two again, I think I would lean towards Love playing for Back Ted. for Blood versus those. Yeah, because because those are a little a little bit. I don't want to say too old, but but they are a little bit thin going back to them. Versus Back for Blood has a little bit more to it, a little more yeah. meat on the bone. Yeah. Uh, and then on the twenty second, we have Dark Pictures Anthology Anthology House of Ashes. 
Sorry. <laughs> that was very funny. <laughs> On the 19th, uh, Inscription came out, a game that is nice. so good that it's New York so Times good. said about it, holy fuck, this is so good. And they put that on the front page of the New York Times. And it just came out like that. It's so good. You have to play Inscription. I have it on my Steam library. (laughs) You have to play it, period. End of story. I don't care who you are. You have to play Inscription. And because we're running short on time, etc., we will be talking about this game in depth during our Game of the Year uh, episode of Local Chat. So look forward to that. But just know this. You have to play Inscription. No ifs, ands, buts, or sucks about it. You have to play Inscription. It's so good. And don't watch any trailers. Um, Rounding out October, uh, Dark Pictures Anthology, House of Ashes, Guardians of the Galaxy, Age of Empires 4, and Riders Republic all came out in October um apparently uh, guardians of the galaxy it's doesn't pretty good suck, it's pretty good but I, I also don't believe i don't believe I've, anybody who says that i've so. heard people in the same breath say how bad avengers is and how surprised they were that uh guardians of the galaxy was so good do you think do you think that maybe it's because mm. avengers set such a low bar people That's were just like to it's say. pretty yeah. good like, I, yeah. I also think i don't think ian would like i don't think you would like guardians of the galaxy because i know even God like Vinny was saying, characters get very grating at certain points. But I think everyone came away with like the narrative and the story that it was was very uh, used the characters very well and like was very uh, well written. Unlike the mm, sentence yeah. I I wrote in my mouth. So um, starting Keep in November, moving. we can um, probably skip this one. No, I was just going to say Netflix launched its video game service via its mobile app. We already touched on that. I just wanted to say that sentence would make you think that there was a mobile app in which you played Netflix games on. Uh, that is in fact, not true. It's, you it's download the, the game Netflix separately app. in the play store. And then you sign into Netflix in the video game app. There are no apps yeah. in the Netflix store. It is That's its weird. own That's app. Weird. Uh, I discovered that when that news broke. And uh, also for- I, I'm not certain about this, but I don't believe any of the games on there are actually new. They are just all the previous mobile games tied to Netflix properties that they have now brought into their Netflix gaming service. Pretty pretty yeah. sure that's it. But yeah, because we were shooting stuff for it, and I was like, oh, you can just download these on the Google Play Store, and then it turns out that's how you play them. That's what you have to you do. You just <laughs> sign into Netflix when you launch the game. Ugh. That's um, nice. Nobody cares about Call of Duty Vanguard. It came out. It's not good. I, I just want to say... I just want to say, I have been down on Call of Duty for years now. This, I feel like this is the first time in a long time that the sales numbers are very down on Call of Duty Vanguard. I, I, I may be pulling this number out of my ass, but I feel like it's the worst sell- selling Call of Duty game in like seven or ten years. Like it's just, it's hit so poorly, and that kind of makes me optimistic for maybe they will finally make some good changes to Call of Duty. Probably not. But it's crazy how this game was basically forgotten before it even came out. Yeah, I think their current their current model um, has just completely plateaued. There's there's yeah. nowhere else to go for it, and they need they need to come in. Literally, it's funny. It's sledgehammer, but it they need to come in swinging uh, with a bunch of changes and like, the, oh my god, it's still so bad on PC. Like it runs so poorly on PC. I just I can't. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Uh, then on the ninth, um, Forza, Forza Horizon Five came out. Uh, the pinnacle of the Forza games. Um, I think for a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> I think for a lot of people, no this game way. finally uh, hit all the nails on the head for everything. Uh, as far as a racing game, I think it took everything that three and four were working towards and per- like made that almost. I- perfect i I don't know that 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 makes it sound like great setting i I gotta say that makes it sounds like they changed something from three and four but they really didn't it's literally 95 percent the same i think it's more refining but but see that's the crazy thing is they really didn't i think they just added a couple things on top like there's more showcase events and it's a different location and I'm honestly struggling to think of any other yeah, changes but I, but they made I would versus call that three refining. or four. No, it's not refining. It's just like we added more of this event. That's all. Yeah, but you're kind of like making the thing 
towards its best. I don't know. That's how I would I, I, I just think I, I was, ex- I mean, I don't want to say I was expecting this, but I want Forza Horizon 5 to be a fifth title. I want it to be a new game, and this really did not do that. It is literally 99% the same as 3 and 4. A lot of the menus, the core mechanics, the racing, everything is almost identical. They just changed the setting, and they added a couple new event types, and I think they added like one or two additional like currency interaction type things um and that's it and it's crazy because it's still a great game it's fun to play but man it's just more and more and more of the same and so uh ign's game of the year because they're idiots (laughs) whatever yeah can't spell ign without ignorant um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sorry wow i mean i saw someone post that on a ign twitter post so <laughs> i felt that good. was i think they had like misspelled something in a thing anyways um <laughs> on the 11 11 uh grand theft auto the trilogy definitive edition came out boy Ooh. that's some hot garbage um you can see are... a lot of bug collections you uh, remember when like we were like Everybody was like pseudo optimistic about Cyberpunk 2077 crashing so hard on launch that people were like, um, you know, I think this means that AAA games are actually going to be better at launch now because like like Ubisoft came out and they're like, we're going to slow our roll a little bit. And like all these other studios that are like, we're going to delay stuff. And everybody's like, go ahead and delay it. We don't want another Cyberpunk. And then this comes out and. I'd, this is not as bad as Cyberpunk simply because there was more expectation on Cyberpunk as a new title, but this trilogy was bad, bad, bad. Just like horrible implementation, all sorts of bugs, issues, crashes, just like things that that should have never passed just a first glance. Like the rain texture obscuring you oh, so much yeah. that it's so ridiculous. It's so bad. There, if it's raining so at night, you basically can't see more than fifteen feet. Just all sorts of crazy stuff like that. I. I can't believe we had another release like this after how and, much negative publicity Cyberpunk got for the same thing. You and know? and bugs that were already inherent in the original releases, like the the wiggling car getting bigger. Yeah, that was in the originals, and it's still there. Like I don't. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, there's a fantastic glitch compilation video. I th- I think it's on the Gamespot YouTube, but I would check that out. It's so funny, um, and wild. Some of these glitches that that came through that. Thankfully, I got it for free. Yay. Um, that worked out. Um, I, I I have to go soon, so can we rush through these? Yes, yes. I would also like to go soon. Um, I'm just going to skip uh, and go to... Can, I, can I do it? I feel, uh, I feel like I can you do it. You love doing it. G4 is back. Yay. Who cares? I it's care. I like G4. No, no I like it doesn't. G4. Uh, also, who good. cares about live TV anymore? Uh, uh, network channels. It's weird. They're doing like a suit, like like sometimes they're streaming on Twitch at the same time they're live to the channel. It's very weird. Anyways, uh, Battlefield 24 to 2042 mm. came out. Surprise! Mm. It's awful, even though it had a lot of positive reception heading towards the launch. The beta kind of tarnished that a little bit. Uh, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, another remake, uh, mixed reception, a lot of it based around aesthetic choices. Uh, Epic Games acquired Harmonix. I feel like that's a good thing for Harmonix because they were pretty stagnant for a while after Rock Band not really doing anything and Drop Mix, etc. Um, Solar Ash, uh, Jake Terrio's Game of the Year 2021, simply because it's from <laughs> Hyper Light Drifter, folks. Uh, I don't think he's playing Hyper Light Fantasy Drifter. I, you know, he's never oh, even right. heard Sorry. of it. Yeah, he hasn't Sorry, played I, it. I mixed it up. Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen Endwalker finally hit the best MMO ever gets even better. Let's pause here for a little bit and talk about Halo Infinite. Um, it's good. I beat it today. I'm... It finally came out. Uh-huh. I made it eight <laughs> I I hours like into that, that game. I... I lost my save and then I beat the game in six hours. <laughs> I I don't like it. I don't, oh, I don't like it. I don't. I'm not crazy wild. about it either. Did, did I, you like I'm, four and five? I liked four gameplay okay. wise. I did not like it story wise. Yeah. I did not like five at all. Yeah, I didn't like um, five at all. I I like some of the obviously like the grapple hook is like different and new and it's like, oh, cool, fun. Um, I just like I'm struggling to care about yeah, anything like I, I don't know like the the i feel so far away from the story 
at this yeah. point. And and story was such an important thing for me for all the Halo games, which is one of the reasons why I was so disappointed in five. Um, but it's not bad. Like, there's nothing bad. Like, it, I think it. it yeah, it's, it's just I'm right there yeah. with you. A I, weird confluence of things that it's like, I don't know. I'm not enjoying myself as much. But, I, I've yeah. had a blast with it. Uh, yeah, it's weird because like uh, my first time through, I like mainlined a lot of the story stuff. And then when I had to restart, I was like, oh, I'm, I'll do some of the story stuff. So A, I had the scorpion gun and B, I was killing everything in one shot. So I basically did the entire map of all the fobs and everything and while doing the story, then got to where I was, where my save data uh, where I deleted my save data and then sw- I had a ceremony said goodbye to the scorpion gun gun traded it out and then completed the game normally and I don't know if it was that part or all before that but I had such a blast with all of that um, up until the end and it just spits you back out and I think I'm gonna go 100% a lot of the campaign stuff but it's just the mobility and the movement with the grappling hook feels so good I think um, I think the difference for me is like I like the feel of the mobility, but it it also feels like the the world is so empty. Yeah. Like yeah, the there's world. there's so many things where like you can go up to structures and there's like nothing to do. You yeah, it's a cool at, structure. And yeah, and you're like it's a cool structure. What's here? What's here? A no. lot of that stuff. I wonder if they will add things to it because they hint at a lot of stuff once you beat the game. And it's also they've been saying that this is the platform for Halo for a while. So I wonder if there's going to slowly like unlock the ring and add more stuff and there's a lot of some of those structures you see in multiple places kind of look like teleporters there's like the weird well the the circle like forerunner structures like yeah the, those some of examine. some of those you yeah you can examine them but there's like there's stuff that the brutes have like structures yeah. like towers with spartan helmets and and yeah. unsc helmets and there's nothing to do there i, I thought yeah. that it was like a like if you if you cleared all of those, you would get an achievement or something. But it's like no, they're just yeah. there, which is yeah. which is fine. But it feel it it's fine if you want to use that to help build out the world. But it doesn't feel like something that should have been left just blank. It feels like it's something. Oh, there should be something here. Um, I have to go get my pizza. I'm not done playing Halo Infinite. I still have like a I probably halfway through a little bit. Um, but those are my thoughts. Those are right his back. thoughts on Halo. <laughs> Yeah, but just to um, bring it back to the news of the year, Halo Infinite, uh, Kyle and I's thoughts withstanding has hit huge. Uh, it feels like everybody's loving it. The free multiplayer that released a month earlier, uh, the campaign coming out, Game Pass, the open box, the uh, open world formula. So it's it feels like a, a really, really big refresh of Halo Infinite uh and everybody's going crazy about it so you know good for them i feel like that's that's the big news around this is that halo infinite finally came out and somehow exceeded the crazy expectations for it who knows yes oh i have a hot minute anyways continue ian gibson yeah so moving on then um some quick hits here game awards on uh december 9th the winner of was uh it takes two surprise winner um this next news item i need to confirm this i did get this from wikipedia but quite frankly it's disturbing if it's true apparently the mario and sonic series was canceled after six games due to the controversy of the upcoming beijing olympics um we're now very close to present time december 15th embracer group has embraced board game publisher asmodi which uh is huge they they put out a whole lot of board games so I, i'm curious to see what that means does that mean we're going to see a lot more video game board games or does that mean we're going to see a lot more video game board games uh, either way could be exciting uh this last one i didn't even know this happened but you'll probably see it next october five nights at freddy's security breach which is the latest first person entry in the series yeah, I feel like I'm not promising anything, but I feel like a full playthrough of this should be Spooky Pixel 2022. But you won't go it's anywhere terrifying. near it, so Kyle and I might I, do it. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. suffer through. <laughs> yeah, you guys have fun with that. Um, and finally, the gunk came out. I haven't touched the gunk. Have either of you guys touched the gunk? I have downloaded the gunk. I have not touched the gunk. Does it have anything to do with the stuff? 
<laughs> but this is this is from Image and Form. This is kind of a um, departure from their usual. They do all the uh, Steam World uh, games, uh, they which are fantastic. So it's it's exciting to see them try something new here. Uh, I know we're all ready to close it out, but what are you guys like closing thoughts on 2021? What do you what do you what are your overall emotions, thoughts, feelings about 2021 in gaming? Messy. Messy. Um, Why do you say that? It's just a lot of ups and downs. Um, and there are <laughs> some years I can remember back, like like mid 2000s, 2007, 2006, where it was just like there weren't that many controversies. There were a lot of good games. And I feel like we haven't had a year like that in a while. And COVID obviously is not helping much um, mm-hmm. with with streamlining certain things and, and forcing developers to do certain stuff. And it just feels kind of muddy, kind of messy. We've got some good, like really great games that have come out and some really bad news stories that have also come out. So it's kind of just yeah. like, ooh. I feel like those memes where they're like, oh man, uh, pick out like pick one of the games that came out in your birth year or not birth year, but like when you were 12, like you can only have one and it's always like 15 games that you're like, those came out. And And then I think kids who are 12 this year, looking back at those memes in like 15 years going to be like, I don't want any of that crap other than inscription and probably far cry six. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, I feel like, like kind of kind of going off you, Kyle, I feel like this year was, a lot of triple a news stories but not a lot of triple a releases or releases that hit well but it was it felt like a really good year for indie games like just a lot yeah. of small titles yeah. coming out hitting big they're hitting in those gaps they're hitting bigger than you know like i'm just i'm just looking at like october was inscription but it's also facing Met- it's also facing Back for Blood and Far Cry 6. But it's also Hot Wheels Unleashed. And out of all those titles, it was the indie smaller games that hit and were received a lot better than the bigger budget AAA titles. Um, I, f- I feel like you're exactly right. And it's like small studios making a name for themselves, which is like, yeah. we love that. That's great. Yeah, and and it and it's crazy because I feel like that's been happening for several years, but it was alongside AAA releases. So I'm really excited moving forward for all of those indie studios who got the they got the attention and the praise they deserved. I'm ready for their second, third, fourth games to come yeah. out. Um, they've got a little bit bigger budget, you know, they got more attention, bigger publishers, they've got bigger balls because now they know their game design works. You know, what are they going to come out with next? I'm really excited for that. I feel like we're, in my mind personally, I think we're at a turning point where AAA games are stagnant. Like, look at Call of Duty Vanguard. That should have sold like gangbusters. There is nothing explicitly about Call of Duty Vanguard that explains its sales because it's basically the same as the last 5, 10 Call of Duty games in terms of what it offers, what it's new, etc. But the industry is changing and the AAA titles are on the decline. The indies are on the rise. And I think 2021 was that, that turning point. Totally. Yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. Uh, I know Kyle desperately wants to go to eat his pizza. I would like to eat, even though it's 10 o'clock at night. Um, Folks, just come on down. uh, I hope you're enjoying your holidays. Uh, We are off uh, this week, kind of, uh, but we'll be back uh, with... uh, Actually, there will be a live episode for 52, so check that one out. Um, You can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. Uh, and also, if you're listening to this, it is nearly two hours in this recording. But if you made it this far, uh, my promise to you, if you ping me on Discord uh, uh, that you made it this far, I'll buy you a copy of Inscription. It's a one-time offer. I like that. So make it this like far, and you get Inscription. I'll help that Code too. word, chocolate. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, and we will see you all. Bye.